Welcome back to Threshold of Revelation. This is session number 14, entitled Scrubland. Last session, the group, um, they um, made it across the Dwarven Bridge um, to the southwest of Ancrag. Uh, they avoided Ancrag altogether, but they've seen the aftermath of the Red Dragon of Ancrag in very close proximity um, up on the mountain road. Um, they apparently have engaged with the hunters on the southwest or southeast coast, um, and they definitely destroyed the uh, sanctified location of Whitehammer on the um, chalk coasts uh, to the south, the southern portion of the island they just passed over. After making it across the bridge and onto the island that they are now on, whether or not they remember the name to it or not is up to their nose. Um, but they're there. Um, they rested in a um, notched little area in the kind of inland coast off of the river slash ocean. Um, kind of a, a subsection of the delta segment that's kind of present there. Um, lots of cavities in the stone, some pools of fresh water, some pools of salt water. Um, and some nooks and crannies where they were able to find a nice place they could hold up for the night, or so they thought. Um, during the evening, uh, they were attacked by Denisatvan raiders. Um, whether or not those Denisatvan raiders were trying to find them specifically or just came upon them um, is really unknown. Um, but they routed them, um, defeated them. Um, they did not defeat the blood hunter that was among them. Uh, but they did kill a number of the uh, huntresses that were present in their group. That said, they complete their long rest. They awaken inside of that same space, and um, upon doing so, they can decide what they want to do, where they want to go, and really what's next for them. Well, we were headed north across this island is my understanding pretty sure yeah is that shrine worth checking out on our travels do we know do we remember what that was off the top of my head now but it... i don't know that that's familiar to me i feel like that location was given, was given to us at the monastery by Long. the other operative hmm I thought it was the dwarves that gave it to us, but I could be wrong. I don't write things down. I mean, it's, in, it's in route if we were to head straight towards the other, that northern river mouth that's between us and Bridger. Yeah, either way, I don't think it was given to us by a bad influence, so... Or, ooh, was that the way into the Underdark, to that gnome city? That does sound that, right. Yeah. Okay. That's where the ash breed. Yeah, yeah we, we don't need us. to go down or there. Pa Paca. That's what Paca told us about. Yeah, because that's where Monastery, worm, isn't that like where Worm Guy's crew, they went down, and then he killed them down there because they went crazy. Or he found out they were murderers or something. Sociopaths. Yeah, so that's just a way into the underdark if we want to. Okay, well, but... we, can, we can go past that. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think we want to go underground. Nobody wants to go underground, do they? I mean, Nick's not, Nick's. I'd love to have a relationship with some Cipher Nebly people, you know, they're good, they're good heart, good folk to know in the Underdark, but our main things are above ground. I will note the bridge does have um, very loose uh, roads that kind of go up and down the coast. There wasn't any immediate signage present, um, but like uh, I said with the bridge, it looked like there was a bit of devastation that kind of happened with the bridge and presumably here on this side as well based on the uh, dragon glass that you found in the scrubland so whether or not you want to kind of move down the road or up the road is up to you uh, there was some question regarding um uh, flat flaps landing location whether there's anything there that might be worth checking out there was also discussion about heading north and trying to find a crossing to the makoshi um Plains, Makonsky Plains. Koshi is cyberpunk. <laughs> I think we decided against going to the Flap Flap port because there wouldn't likely be much there anyway. They were already gone. Yeah. 
they were gone and it's it's a flying city so what would they leave behind i mean it looks like if we just go straight north like eventually we'll get to a nice bridge and then we can just get back on the main road to bridger yeah how how familiar are we with the world map um again as familiar as your player or as the player is yeah basically everything that you have on the map is stuff that you've gleaned stuff that you know um two of you have traveled across the from west to east and all the markers that were kind of placed there were kind of thrown out but road wise and region around road wise it's very capably um, traversed by wandering guard if from your experience Uther, when you traveled from the west to the east and made your way to penford ultimately the uh, grasslands on both sides of bridger and kind of the hill lands um, around um, Bukonski Plains and kind of near Penford um, grant themselves for like very good ambush positions. So if people have the ground held, um, wandering around it, it might be precarious if not done cautiously. Okay. We don't specifically know of any bridges crossing any of these rivers, right? Other than the one we just walked over. Correct. Yeah, the map would show the main thoroughfares that cross. So the black lines that kind of the thick black lines that cross. Okay. Um, but outside of that, you don't know of any crossings, ferry, underground, tunnel. Or, elemental. Or yeah, elemental, whatever. And each hex is how much? How much distance? About seven miles. Okay. So the crossing between the landmass that we're on to the one to the Makonski Plain is fairly significant. Yeah, the at the wider oh. points, the more narrow points like here, and kind of here, not so much. Okay. I'd say we could go up this way, like following here, and maybe go this way, and then see if we can find a bridge from here to here to cross. Maybe even go here and see if we can find a bridge there, and cut our time to Bridger right there. What is our current goal? Is it Bridger? Right now, it's to assess Bridger, or we can, if we want to just skip, we can go to uh, Eonis itself and try to take it over. We could also see if we can find the leader of the... I think the leader is outside of Petford. Yeah, I think our, we're yeah, purposefully okay. avoiding him. Yeah, we're our Odin, we could also kill him. Bridger. Bridger seemed like our best bet. Yeah, which our goal is to destroy Bridger, not like... Fix it to literally just blow the whole bridge up, pretty much. I'm guessing. Or Stop just, them to be we're 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 to them. impact their their routes from yeah, us to Bedford. Like, Not destroy Bridger, but somehow like sabotage or otherwise disrupt impact the shipping. Them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like if we can just collapse one side of it, like that would be mission complete. Not even, not even that. We don't even have to do that. We could, we could just, we could figure it out when we get there. We don't have to. We don't have there to. There are other anything. ways, <laughs> right? There are other ways to disrupt the lines, maybe by yeah, working with people or against. Our goal people. is to get it done as fast as possible, and the way, the fastest way possible, we just <clears> need <throat> to destroy the whole thing. Because while we could try to like block it off, they might smuggle something through or something. Because you never can know. Well, how would we do there. that though, Brent? I mean, do we need to find explosives? Yeah, that's why we're going there to see. We're going so to how assess we can Bridger. Yeah, the yeah. current best bet is to get an idea of what's happening in Bridger and how we can slow it all down. Yeah, you guys the think it'd be possible to just stay on this little island and go straight over to Bridger? That yeah, I figured that might be a bridge there, but I'm not. What concerns me is we're likely once we get north of this island, we're hitting a much more populous area. And we're likely to find a lot more people that are not so kind to the conglomerate that are maybe have ENS influence. So once we do leave this island, I'm losing all conglomerate regalia. I'm not I just want getting picked off one, as a POW again. I just want to throw out one little note. I just see that everybody kind of switched places. That's real weird. Um, uh... Yeah, that's all sorts of weird. So um, I, I didn't. Just, I didn't even look at the stream. It's okay. It it was right to start, but sometimes when I go live, it likes to do me dirty. A big deal. But um, so the one little note I want to add to um, uh, you guys, there was something that was mentioned, and I it, it it wasn't mentioned. Um, now when you were talking about um, flat flap, 
flat flap doesn't just land there and there's no reason for it to land there there is a small town that is permanent that flat flap basically connects to it's like a saucer separation if you're a tng fan it's not a very large town i had mentioned it's not a very big place but it basically acts as like a drop-off point or kind of a trading position when flat flap is in town so I just want to make sure if like information is something you want to gather, that's not a bad place to do it. Moving straight to the Mikonsky Plains, there's a town on the map, but you don't know anything about it. You can kind of see it like right here-ish on the map. But um, yeah, it's entirely up to you how you want to proceed. Well, um... I think we wanted to get away from the dragon's territory, which it seems like the flap flap port potentially encompass. Do we see in the general area where we are now still more obvious signs of that red dragon's rampage? It's it's literally just the small patches in the scrubland. It's not like a massive amount of damage, and it's relatively it's kind of relegated close to the river. The Wilbers are swapped. Well, then, do you guys want to double back to the flat flat port, or do you want to travel by foot and head north? Is what it's looking like it's down to. I mean, one one thing is, do we want to stay off the main roads as we go into Bridger? That would be one reason to go north and try to cut across that way. Well, I don't. I don't think there's much. <clears throat> I don't think there's much to be concerned about on this current island. <clears throat> It doesn't look like there's a lot of civilization on this particular rock currently. I say north. But yes, once we once we do start approaching Bridger, I would want to have fewer encounters with the just travelers. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure there's like only a there might be like a ladder or something, but other than that, there's probably only a two point entrance thing for Bridger. Other than, like, you know, maybe, like, a something that lowers boats in or something. But other than that, I feel like it's just a... I'd, I'd be surprised if there were not a port attached to that city if it's built over the water. I'd be very surprised if they don't have a port. But as we're going now, I feel like our best chance to find a bridge is along the line in between the little rock rod and the plains. And if we can hide our conglomerate stuff and just have, like, you know... Not like an obvious, oh, we're conglomerate out here. We might run into bandits, but we might be able to talk our way out of that one. Because I don't know what's in the, what's in the planes or in the so I guess I guess the question is, does anybody want to go back to where Flap Flap was? Not really. No. Okay. I guess we travel north and look for access to crossing that river. Absolutely not. Likely where the narrowest point is there on the... So, so the day, it looks like you're going to move one hex north and one more hex north. Is that right? Sounds just, good. To start it out. Just kind of like Run along the bit, up bit. the river back. Okay. So for the first one, I need a d20 roll. And for the second one, I'd like everyone to make a perception roll. Do we want to try to do any crafting or preparations as we travel? Or we might have fewer opportunities to do so. Remember, downtime activities require downtime. You need to settle. No, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. If we need to stop during okay. our travels. Is pondering the use of dragon glass, is that like a, we need a full downtime activity? Or yeah, can we but do that problem, while we walk? The problem is, is because of your location, it would basically be very difficult to glean any new information. Typically, if you're going to do discovery work, you want to do it with a library or some other access of like information, like people. I rolled a 20 on my perception check. They do too, Matt. What are you talking about? They what? didn't when I last put... Dang oh, it. yeah. He, he posted that like five minutes ago. Okay. Are we all doing perception? I'm sorry? Yes. A bit. Can I get a test That's here? That's performance. That's persuasion. Oh, my God. Can I get a test here? Just like a mechanical it, test? What? Can someone shut their camera off and then turn it back on? Okay, good. Yeah, Brent, that's fast. Yeah, new Zoom, apparently <laughs> when I move people around, it's fine. It doesn't cause it to toggle out. 
but apparently the reason why it was fixed then went because of live and then broke again i think it's because of new zoom they just updated anyway back on point um so with those perception rolls um as you're kind of maneuvering um through the first <coughs> portion you're kind of following the river keeping close to it as you kind of get close to the end of that first stretch of the uh, travel you would see off to the west um just out of uh, like just on the horizon uh, what appears to be a tower um, made out of like a white stone it almost looks like um uh it almost looks like because this might actually work for you know those really cheap kind of sets of screwdrivers they're like the little silver handles with like the twisty tops and the the black you know screwdriver portions everybody knows those it looks like one of those stuck in the ground um so it's just like a rondelle of um like positioning a rondelle being uh kind of like a deck yeah we, we're, we covered this moving further forward nix as you're kind of traveling this way you would note that the temperament has kind of changed in the kind of last portion you kind of moved through some um like a divide between the scrubland and then there's this kind of like white sand area that's not terribly like horrid but it probably is more inland from the water um and then there's a breach from that to a bit more of a marshy um heavily bushed kind of like almost jungle climate but like a jungle without the trees so lots of bushes yeah it's a kind of like a wild plains um, and um, you're able to see that there is not too far off from where you're traveling a number of these kind of cavities that are kind of like um, uh, almost like wells, large open cave structures that are kind of set inside of the ground and kind of surrounded with bushes and, um, you know, um, foliage, but they're kind of filled with water. Um, and the one that closest to you, you kind of see that it um, appears to have something in it. Um, whether or not you mm. want to explore that, um, is up to you, um, or if mm -hmm. you wish to continue north, it's, uh, up to you. But I would definitely mention that and be on the lookout, especially if there are any ambushers amongst those bushes, maybe. Okay. Looks yes. like it might be, yeah. So as far as animal life goes, not much, um, not ter too terribly much. This dip that you're looking at is unlike the maybe one or two other ones that you've seen in that instead of being just like a straight kind of bowl in the ground or like deep cup in the ground, this appears to have kind of like a, uh, like it's actually ground out. Like someone actually kind of worked downwards into, or the way the water sits is kind of worked downwards into uh, the earth. You can see that there is like a brass or copper structure at the base that appears to be mechanical, like clockwork mechanical. Um, and you're kind of looking down at it. It looks like there's a massive door, like a vault door in the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and switch you over to the map. It should show you it, but you're not currently placed on it. You'd be looking at this perspective wise from up like here, in the top right corner. Hmm. Okay. So it looks like metalworking. So I was thinking initially it would be like, is it like an ant warren or something like that? But it seems more manufactured. Hmm. Is that an egg-shaped item? It is. Uh, rolling rock? Mm. What do you make of that? <laughs> If you want to kind of pull your tokens from your character sheet down, they should drag and drop uh, without an issue. You can kind of place yourself where you kind of descend down. And any questions that you have about the artifice as you're looking at it, feel free to field them. Um, and I'll try and give you a better explanation. But just so you have an idea of scale here, the door is about, I'd say about 50 feet in diameter. Mm. Quite large. Let me double check my math there. What is the greenish liquid that's about surrounding... About 60 feet in diameter. <laughs> what is that greenish liquid? Does it look like anything natural or does it look like something else? Do you inspect it? Um, How do you pull your token from a what now? 
Just grab uh, it. From go to go to journal where you would normally you. open your. Okay. If you grab a hold of your name in the journal and then drag your name over to the map and then let it. Go. Oh, the name, not the token. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to grab, I, I grab my picture too. Just I was highlighted like, uh, a bunch of shit and I was like, oh, it's not right. I mean, so I would sort of get down and crawl, uh, to so I'm not seen on the edge, and I would want to check out the goo. Okay. Silas, as you make your descent, you do notice that further, a part of the thing that you kind of all climb down is not rock. You realize that there's like this metal thing kind of placed in the dirt. It seems to go through the earth and probably to the cylindrical tunnel that this gate kind of holds. And it almost looks like it's some sort of brace mechanic um, that you're kind of coming down. Um, it's very large, like think kind of like massive industrial like size metal year. Um, and most of it appears to be, um, uh, brass. Um, but as you're kind of looking at it, um, rolling rock, uh, being kind of mental, metally minded, um, you would notice that it's not fully brass. It appears to be a grass, a brass covering that is over, um, uh, wrought iron, um, works. I is it uh, dwarvish? It is not. I'm sorry. What were you saying, Cody? I was going to say I would let them know that these would make great pans. <laughs> would I be able to like recall the um, the manufacturing? Like, you can make a history check. You have double proficiency because it's metal related. All right, so it'll be in a plus three to whatever this is. So eighteen. Um. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Did you have advantage? You said double proficiency. Yeah. Not for advantage. It's no, 15 plus three. And plus three so it's 15 plus three. Oh. For double proficiency. So my double proficiency isn't part of the roll. Gotcha, Having... gotcha. My brain's dumb. Sorry. Thank you. It's okay. There, it was exactly the same number as the one on the right. So my brain was like, what? Tricked him. Tricked me. <laughs> uh, this is draconic. This appears to have been made in dragon by dragons. By dragons. Or draconic be... peoples. We have the egg. A metal dragon's gonna come out. I don't know. So made by dragons or dragon born or half dragons. Mm -hmm. okay, and it considering it's so every but everything's brass coated, so maybe it was brass made like commissioned by a brass dragon. They are well, can so, be a little vain. So you're looking at it and like it looks like it's mostly brass on this outer working. You can see points where there's copper because you can tell that it's kind of greening over. It's kind of forming a patina. And there are other portions that appear to be bronze. So it looks like there's a mix of metals kind of present here. And they are mostly covering over iron. Um, like a wrought iron, like a black iron metal. And then you would also see that down below there are these strange looking devices that are kind of knocked over. Some of them look like they're kind of uh, broken apart um, that have all sorts of strange mechanisms to them. And um, as you don't have an artificer, they're initially outside of your ken. If you want to kind of explore them and uh, examine them, you can try and discern more. But based on your current skill level, I would say just looking at it from a glance, you wouldn't know what they are. Yeah, I think we're pretty safe to like explore this. It's probably made by metallic dragons, so I don't think they're to... I don't think they're gonna knee jerk kill us if someone comes by and sees us snooping. I'll, I'll scamper down and just take a look. How at about it. that goo? Yeah, so it's not a goo actually. Looking at it, it it's like a, moss. Yeah, it appears to be like a really like very dense um like green moss. Um it's it is kind of like more fluidy than a moss would typically be. So it's more of like a, um, oh, what's the, it's more fungusy than a moss. Okay. What, what it is, you're not sure, but you can try and identify it with a uh, nature check. I can give it a go. 14. Uh, yeah, you're not sure, but you definitely know it is not edible. <laughs> Is there any writing anywhere as we come down to this uh, platform? No. Um, typically, draconic writing is more done in runic matters when they're not writing to kind of like relay um, an idea, or when they're trying to relay an idea, they write in runic uh, markings. There are no runes present here, though. There do appear to be a couple of icons, but nothing that is language. 
Icons being the egg. Yeah. So the main and... icon that you're seeing over and over again, and you can kind of see it here, is the egg. And it looks like these strange cog horns on the exterior. I'm going to go ahead and just do this a uh, little bit more um, beat to beat. Um, so we can kind of get an idea of what everyone's wanting to do here. So Chody, um, what is Silas doing? Um, Checking out the door. Absolutely. So looking, Opening the door. <laughs> looking at the door, you can see that there's bits of clockwork that kind of intersect and it feels very solid. Um, it looks um, like this. There appear to be three separate devices or kind of lock mechanisms on either side and one massive lock in the center. And it seems that there's symbolage on the top that indicates that the egg directly above might be some means of kind of entertaining um, how this thing works. There are a couple of sub locks on the front, but you don't think that um, physical manipulation is going to be something that you're going to be able to do at your current level to adjust these locks, if that makes any sense. I would try really hard, though. Yeah, you would fail really hard. <laughs> I'm not that's even. Fine. Gonna, I'm, not even I'm trying. General. No, I'm. I'm. No, I. That's fine. I'm just playing the character. Absolutely. He would try really hard to make you to make you smile a bit. You do actually kind of make them budge, but like you're not able to kind of get them up the rails of the locks to where they need to go. I would point out they need to go up there. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I have maybe 40 or 50 more lizards. I could, I could probably lick this thing. <laughs> Clone lizard. Uh, Uther, um, what would you like to be doing during this time? Just watching Silas. Okay. Um, Come on, yeah. champ, chop your feet. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely... You um, gotta want it. <laughs> it's definitely outside of his strength. Um, okay, then, uh, Zach, what is Bodhi doing? Looks like you're kind of standing on that center plate there. Uh, just sort of admiring the work and looking looking to see if there's anything discernible. Okay. Where you're currently standing, there's a sense of, like, uh, glow. There's a sense of a, um, kind of like an electric feeling. The best way I can de describe it is the way I typically describe, like, a, an essence of magic kind of lingering. Is, have you ever, like, been outside of a room and someone has, like, a TV, like an old CRT TV on in there? And you know it's on, like... You know that it's on. You can just feel that it's on, even there's if that, it's not. There's that hum. There's that hum. There's that ambiance. Yeah. yeah. That's the same kind of vibe you're getting standing here at this center plate. Hell of it. I'll cast press the digitation into it. Okay. Nothing happens. That's fine. I'll go back to trying to copy down the, the image, the crest sure. Roll, in my journal. Rolling Rock, uh, what are you doing while that's happening? Um, I think I'd just be kind of meandering kind of looking at these different pillars and stuff seeing if uh there's any like valves or okay so things to twist or touch or it's interesting that you chose this one specifically it looks like this is the only one that's intact and you can kind of see the other ones and how this should actually work so the bulb of the artifice is kind of flat on the bottom with a number of kind of spiral shaped um gold platforms underneath that kind of hold it to the ground on top of the bulb portion, there are kind of holes on the top. Uh, there's five of them. And then saddled on top of the bulb is the spike, which is, if you look at here... Uh, oh, hold on, I'm on the wrong layer, sorry. If you look at here... Dang it! Where? Here. If you look at here there it goes. <laughs> and here, that's the spike that rests on top of the bulb. So if you're looking at it, basically this is the middle portion, this is the very bottom here, and then this portion goes on top of that. And it looks like this one is intact. It looks like this one is intact. This one's broken off, and you believe this is connected to this. This one is not entirely intact. It looks like it's broken off its middle portion, and then this one is intact. So these three look like they're fine. Next with Sato Rolling Rock, what do you think these bottom ends are doing when they're in inside in the in the earth or in more metal? I don't know what they do when they're running, but I can tell you they're oh. not running right now. Best way to look at it visually. Sorry, let me go ahead and snap down here so you can see it. This one, <laughs> this is like a side view of what it looks like. 
be dumb. Do you see what so I'm, I'm saying? This one fell yeah, off yeah, yeah. this. Okay. I'm a, yeah. This is probably way too heavy to like lift and put back on top of this. 100%. Oh, I want to... Can't. I don't know if we're going to be able to fix it, boys. But the idea is that goes over top, inside, and down into the either the structure or the earth itself, maybe. It's like uh, connect, it's like connected at a point like this. That's kind of like a, an access port to the bigger structure that you're kind of walking around on. Because this is all sand here. This mm -hmm. part here, you're kind of walking around on it. It's got like a little <clears throat> ship, like bong bong bong, like you're walking on like sheets of metal that are hollow. Sorry, did you say this is an act? Like, you can go inside this? this is, you said this is an access port? Um, it is, but it's completely flooded. I mean, I'm wearing Mariner's armor. I could go dive in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's also very tight, too. But, yeah, you could definitely do it. Do you want to have rope tied around you before you do that? Just in case you get run into trouble? Hmm. Don't you have one of you guys have, like, a magic lasso ability that, like, pulls people up? Oh, yeah, I have to see you. I have to be able to see you. If you're if you're if you're telling me yes, give me you know, what's what's the signal and I'll get you out of there. Yeah, if you put like you have like light or something that you can like put like a a thing on my like bald head and that way like even if I'm in the murky water you can have a general idea of where I am. Uh, I've got this uh, this fancy torch. I don't think I think torch. Is, oh yeah, it's ever burning, right? Like it, it'll work underwater. Yeah, as far as I know, I haven't had a chance to identify it, but my understanding is yes. So if I carry that and I just kind of. Like kick my legs. I'm just gonna tuck that into your belt, and you're <laughs> you're gonna angler fish your way down there. Yeah, exactly. And then, so if I start, if the torch starts frantically waving, you know to lasso yeah. me out. Yeah. Okay. So you just it sounds like you a just number panic, of, shake your tuckus, and I'll get you. Out. A number of different, um, a number of different mechanisms for righting wrongs that are being uh, attempted here. Uh, but yeah, you kind of start working your way down. And as you kind of get into the cogs and start making your way down, you realize it is very tight. There are a lot of strange kind of um, pistons and um, gears and mechanisms that you're kind of working your way down. Are you going head first or feet first? Uh, I think I'd be going... if. Like, is it the water? Can I kind of like pull myself down with my arm? Like, is it that tight? I don't yeah, need to actually swim. And, and there's enough to kind of grab a hold of, too. So, yeah, if you're working your way head down, you're basically climbing an upside down ladder. Think Bishop in the. Think uh, Bishop in the tunnel, exactly. From yeah, I guess I'd be going head first and then just kind of using the torch to look at the walls, look at the surroundings, Perfect. see if there's any valves or things I can. Buttons, any kind of. There's no like levers. There's no switches. There's no dials. There's no like anything. It's just a bunch of weird mechanisms that appear to be kind of like a part of some other artifice, and some of them look like they're damaged. So it doesn't look like this structure is sound. Um, obviously, I mean you're crawling into a hole that was created by one being knocked over. As you descend about thirty feet, it comes to a point where it basically becomes impassable. The gears are basically kind of locked in the space in front of you, and it looks like you can't get through. However, you did follow a what appeared to be a kind of large cable um, of like copper metal that kind of descended between a lot of the levers and pistons and gears that you've been kind of working your way down with. And you can see a part where it L-shapes into the wall. It L-shapes in such an angle that it would go towards the center of whatever this large structure is. Basically, it kind of goes like this. That's the pointing direction. And um, Okay, so it's can, feeding to the middle. You can kind of see like it go for a little bit, and whatever it's connected to appears to be uh, platinum. Like there's a platinum core in the center of this thing. Ooh. All right, once I can't um, go no further, and I'm assuming any damage I'm assuming is beyond, like, just the mending cantrip to try to yep. reattach any wires or anything. I'll be honest, it's... So, the, we had this conversation on the Friday game. So, mending is for putting two broken sides together, but if something's kind of shorn down or something is kind of, like, ripped apart in a way that it's, like, splintered all over the place, mending can fuse, like, two broken sides to one another, but it will not correct damage to an item that is not just a break. Do you get what I mean? Okay, so 
yeah. this is well beyond just like some split wires and stuff. I mean, it definitely, if you knew what things were supposed to be, like you could start working at putting things back together. And also you could then use tools under here to try and work at that. But again, you're underwater, which is going to make it complicated. And then um, you're upside down and don't have much space to work. Complicated. Um, and you don't know how everything's supposed to work here. Uh, we'll have to get a goblin artificer from Flap Flap. <laughs> get him, get him back here. Get him, get him. Uh, I know a guy. If you want to, you you would basically not really have much means for... I guess you could just like let go of everything and try and kind of float up backwards. <laughs> but, like, I, I just kind of pull myself like back up the way can't, I can. You can't oh. turn. You can't, yeah, you're yeah I can't turn. Um, I guess I start waving the torch frantically. Yeah. You you could just die. Your armor will bring you up by itself. <laughs> at, uh, at, at zero, you'll float to the top at 60 feet around. And then the soul just floats up as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Obviously, there's a means for you to tug the rope and then pull you up or snap you if they want to, but yeah. You can get if up they want without, to. You can get up there without spell casting. Okay. But again, it's a team effort. If he's giving the signal, I'm getting him out of there. Alright. Yeah, I just kind of explained what I saw. It's kind of beyond my skill Rizekiel, to repair. Rizekiel, it looks like you're kind of looking off in a specific direction. Yeah, I like, because I can kind of see that like it goes down. I was just kind of looking out into the water to see how far it went out. Yeah, um, it actually looks like it Hard like dives. Straight drops. Okay. Yeah, it's not a straight drop. It's kind of like a good angle, like probably lower than forty-five angle kind of drop. Um, and uh, it looks like it's connected to whatever you're standing on. Um, the other thing you would notice, kind of looking around, is is if all of these were kind of like put together, it would be kind of like uh, an array of six, like whatever that is, whatever you're standing on, kind of looking at it from where you're at. It's like some sort of array. And uh, seeing Silas kind of move the door, question, do uh, I think me going giant would help move the door? No. Things? It's, no. Okay. It's, it's a lot of weight, a lot of distance, and a lot of, like, kind of causing something to kind of go where it needs to go and doing it six times. Gotcha. The okay. sideways ones would probably be the easiest with the giant size because you could reach up and then drag it. But the ones that have to go up, like, a good 30 feet, probably not going to happen. Gotcha. Okay. Um, it was more of a pride thing, is why he tried. <laughs> it moved. Well, I got you. Yeah, I just, I didn't. I just wanted to ask, just in case, you know, being giant size might have helped. Last but not least, Nix, is there anything that you want to inquire about specifically? Nope. Uh, I'm just watching. I was especially interested in what Rolling Walk was doing. Okay, so you kind of move over to him when he starts doing the dive. You're up there at the top with Bodhi as well as they're kind of going down. He comes up and reports everything verbatim, right, Rolling Rock? You don't keep anything from the party. Nope. Pretty much explain everything I saw, and yeah, we, we're gonna need like some sort of artificer mechanic in order to get this thing up and running beyond what it currently is. Mm -hmm. So now we don't know what it is. Pass those initial inceptions. I'm just gonna leave it to free play. Do what you like. If something happens in the world, you know, or you're exploring something, I'll describe it. But again, I'm I'm going up here and screwing with this egg because I listed something about it. Okay. So you go over to the egg and uh, you would see that it's kind of like on a platform that's kind of um, got like a, a kind of casual walk over to it, like a balcony. Um, and it's not a full egg. It doesn't look like there's a portion in the ground. It kind of cuts off at the bottom, like third. Um, the top two portions look like they can swivel independently. And touching them and moving them, you can see that they do kind of shift to the sides. Um, looking at the um, uh, device, um, it does look like there is a trio of holes on the second or the lower uh, swivel. Um, and they kind of have ornate um, designs around them. If you look at the clockwork layer door um, icon here, um, you would see that there's kind of a symbol in the center there. This kind of strange yep. draconic symbol. Kind of looks like a scorpion or something. Yeah, yeah. See that little like center portion where the lines come to? There's like this little uh, like diamond like... diamond shape in the middle. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, between the second and third. On the egg that you're looking at, the real egg, there's a hole in there. Like a, it looks a perfect, like a Metroid. Yeah, it kind of looks like a Metroid. Perfectly yeah. round hole in the middle there that you could presumably slide something into. Uh, it needs a key. It needs three keys. I, I need three keys. Um, are they egg shaped? <laughs> no, they're Metroid shaped or whatever you uh, said. I wasn't paying attention. That's fair. <laughs> Kid walked up. Go ahead, Tony. Um, I, I I don't know if this is too uh, high functioning for Silas or not, but uh, sure, he's sure. gonna yeah he's gonna kind of walk around the um just the perimeter of things, huh? holding out his hand, feeling for wind, or looking for openings like natural cave openings or anything into it, but feeling for wind or something to where it seems like air is coming out from the cave. You have survival trained and, and smart and reasonable. Yes, survival trained and nature trained. Those are both within yeah. Silas's wheelhouse. So what you are feeling is, is there is wind coming from the south. Um, looking south in that way, like it looks like the water continues into the earth, and this might have, or this might be connected to the river proper at some point further in. Okay, I'd like to try. I have a swim speed, so I'd like to swim down and kind of do a little scouting. Okay, inside of the water, you can see typical like, um you know, sea creatures, um, nothing crazy or scary. Um, it looks like it's mostly kind of river fish. Um, and, uh, it does look like there's, uh, strangely, um, points at the bottom that have, um, what you don't know. Well, no, you have nature trained. You would know. Um, it looks like coral, but coral is a salt water thing. It looks like the coral is dead, but it's still kind of like at the bottom of this little ravine here. Or this little river here. Okay, but, but I don't see any openings that move forward and in. No, if you were going to continue down the river, um, it would come to a point where it's completely underwater travel, and you could co continue on. Um, it would I be... wouldn't by myself. I would yeah, turn yeah. around if I get too I would, far. I would say like once you get to where the cave ends and it just becomes an underwater like waterway, um, you'd probably stop and turn around. Yeah. But if you have, uh, knowing like how it kind of goes, you can see that there are bits and like porous portions in the rock um, that the wind seems to be kind of coming through uh, and very low kind of areas above the cave or where the water and the cave don't touch where the wind appears to be coming through as well. I'd uh, come back and let the team know and just kind of continue looking maybe around the rock faces as well and things like that. Just vent holes or something. Okay. Yeah. You get a full scope of it and it's, you know, very kind of tight um, and uh, very kind of, the the real the real exit out of this space besides the one you came through would be swimming through the river the underwater river or the underground river i let them know that could be an option i can throw a firebolt at the door okay it hits you see the metal kind of heats a little bit but it doesn't do any damage to it just trying to figure out what a dragon would do if they were here <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm an idiot. Blast. <laughs> uh, I got nothing here. I mean, the key thing was a cool lead, but I don't know where we're going to find egg keys. <laughs> okay. Rolling rock, you want to come just pick the locks? Yeah, Steve. Um, Steve, oh. <laughs> it sounds like you had some questions, and also, Brett, you had some questions regarding the array and the items and stuff. Um, and again, with the information you got from Uther, the information you got from Silas, do you have any other ideas that you want to do here? So, Uther found the keyhole. We have no keys, and Silas didn't find no keys underwater. Correct. Right. Um, we don't know what exactly the keys look like, so I can't create a key. Um, don't you have thieves' tools? Don't we need... Th I have to pick, like, three locks simultaneously, right? I don't, nothing so far has said they had to be simultaneous. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I could just try. We could try picking the locks. Okay. Invoke, invoke the spirit of uh, Nimble my ancestor. Okay. Um, I think his name was McTavish. Oh, so, yeah. Dirk McTavish. There he is. Keep bothering him in his spirit. You can make a Thieves' Tools check. That's really fine. Uh, intelligence? 
Um, with this, it would be intelligence. Yes. Twenty-five. Pretty good. Okay. So as you kind of insert and kind of start messing with the mechanism, you're kind of disturbed at first because it's like just really just a cylinder that you're kind of putting the mech or the, the tools into. And you kind of reach a little further in and you can feel something. And you're like, oh, okay. And you're kind of clicking it and you feel like you do something. You then lose two t uh, uh, lock picks. Go ahead and you, you not attract your picks, right? How many charges start with these Ten. tools? Ten? Okay, then I will. I think I'm down to... It'll crack the two because the cylinder spirals very fast and you kind of move your fingers out to kind of avoid any damage and it kind of shreds the uh, the picks inside. Kind of a point inside kind of further in is where the mechanism was and then the point that's actually spinning is further out than that. So it's kind of snapping them in two. And as that happens, you hear this loud blaring... Ah, sound it sounds like a horn kind of coming from various points down below nyx being audio kind of sensitive realize that the holes on top of the bulbs is where the sound is coming from um you kind of hear this weird <laughs> sound coming from the one that he was in um and uh as this one is making the sound um, you can see this weird wobble of these three pillars on top as they're kind of like trying to spin, but they don't have their top cap. Um, and uh, the ones that are um, functioning, so that would be uh, this one here, this one here, and kind of this you're one not we're not seeing pinging, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We know, I know which ones you're talking about. This one about. here, this one here, and this one here. They let out those sounds what you would assume is um, accurate, and then you watch as the bulbs kind of shift and like a, like a flower kind of opening, but in reverse, slide open their sides as the metal petals of the kind of bulb exterior open up a small hole, and then out shoots a oh, robot-like creature from each of them. And bear with me here. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of aliens references in here, man. They drop out large shields. Um, and uh, bear with me here. Like the like the Warven Seers from Skyrim. They appear to have a pair of shields. Um, two massive like bludgeoning shields. I will. Oh, uh, Relic Rock, you should probably be up on that egg. I'll post a picture oh, in the Discord. Course. That's what they look like. I like these guys. And um, they obviously look hostile. They have two different shields. Oh. Let me switch. You want to speak robot? <laughs> uh, Can I yell stand down in Draconic? You certainly could, um, but free action wise, I mean, you, you can do it before the combat starts. I can tell you it does nothing. Okay. So, um. The robots are right there. Ezekiel's closest. Got it. Atlas, good job. Get over here. We're moving quick today. <laughs> so, the math is correct. He's only got to pick two more locks. That's just I forgot thing. to roll it. Two more we are not fully three. rested, right? We are yeah, not we are. fully yeah, rested. We are. We, we are fully you rested. Got a long yeah, rest. Yeah. Got a long rest. Beautiful. I, I rolled initiative late, John. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okie dokie. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So they kind of hit the ground and kind of like <laughs> and like start kind of gyrating their shields as they kind of like get full activation. Um, but yeah, they are ready to fucking go. So uh, top of the initiative is Nyx. Yeah. So Nyx is going to first back up a little bit. I can get this is like a ramp of some sort. Um, there's no elevation change. Um, it's okay. Yeah, you're perfectly fine. It, it's just leading for, yeah, I'm just going to lead back to give ourselves a little bit of room. And I'm going to use my bonus action to give a bardic inspiration to our friend Ezekiel. And that's a bonus action. And then with my action, we're just going to see what happens when we try to sharp note, yeah, 
this one over here. Whoops, this I'm sorry, this one over here. So 26 to hit. That's a horrible roll. Just a horrible roll. 26 hits. Um, and it's force damage. This one. Or no, it's slashing damage. Spill magical. Or piercing in way. It's fine. It'll be three damage. Mm -hmm. Seems fine. So does it seem like it takes, like it does anything to it? It seems like it does three damage to it. Okay, so it's not negated in any kind of weird way. Got it, got it. Yeah. Um, you would notice that the creature does kind of exude an aura of resistance, though, when the spell hits it. It doesn't seem to affect the spell you cast on it, but it might okay, affect thanks. other spells. Got it. Nick's done. Youth are up. Seems like a tough one. Yeah, Get I'm going to shoot the one closest to Ezekiel. Hi, uh, 18 to hit. That'll hit. For 7, and he'll get marked as a favored, so plus a d4. Mm -hmm. uh, Dread Ambusher gives me an attack on top of that one. 27 to hit for 8, plus a d4, and then my second attack. 24 to hit for 13. Awesome. Nice roll. Plus a d4. You kind of shoot straight towards the uh, head mechanism. You can see the eye, and you're kind of like focused on that. One of the arrows actually gets into the glass, and you can see it kind of puncture through probably that last one. Um, it doesn't seem to disrupt the operation of the eye mechanism, but it definitely seems like that's a sweet spot. Does a first shot hit? All three of them hit. All three shots hit, okay. Yep. Uh-huh. Nice. Rolling Rock, you are up. Oh, jeez. Uh, I gotta start hustling. <sighs> Nah, just get the door open. Just drop. <laughs> How... <laughs> just just lock pick the other two locks. Oh, uh, you... Are we not sure that three more spheres are going to keep popping out each just time? Two more I, think, I think he succeeded in this one. <laughs> How many robots could really be in there? Uh, you know what I like either is thinking. If that, if that's we the exhaust plan, the then, robots. Then, yeah, I'll just use my action to pick the next lock. Cause okay. That's what we want. Go ahead and make a Thieves Tools check. You didn't pick the first one. Wait, I fit twenty five failed. I don't know if I can get better than that. Doesn't somebody oh, he, knock? He did fail. Twenty five was awful I didn't, good. I didn't say anything about failure or success. I told you what happened in response to you making that check and doing what you did. It spun what? the second, the lower half. It snapped the two thieves' tools you had in there. And then the alarm started blaring, and it <laughs> spat out the clockwork creatures. That's it. Uh, whether that's a success or not, that's up to you. It has stopped spinning, that second portion. It does appear to be in a different position than it was to start in. So whether or not that means, you know, That means success not, in my book. We're going to call that progress, and we're going to do it again. Like, when I unlock the front door of my house, the alarm usually doesn't go off. Oh, I only got a 16 that time. Okay, you start fiddling around inside of the hole, and um, nothing happens. Like, there's no change. You can't seem to find that mechanism that you found before. Oh, no, boys. Oh, no. All right, um, that's your action. I do have, uh, bonus action, uh, cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. So keep in mind, this is you are currently 60 feet above ground level. So, so it would be right beside, it would spawn right beside Silas. Okay. Give me a shout if you want, Dad. But yeah, if you want to do you. diagonal, you could make it appear here. Yeah, whatever the farthest up. Um, spell templates, second level. I don't have a spiritual weapon. Wow, I am the worst dungeon master. You can just give me a, a hammer. Yeah, yeah. Spiritual. Premium assets. Market or, producers. Or totem pole. Faster caster. Do -do. Weapon. I, I just have a phantasmal sword, sorry. Uh, oh. That'll be what it is for now. I'd say like there. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Uh, I already used my action so I can't move it anymore, but uh -huh. next I can I can push it twenty feet forward and maybe eventually we'll get there. Next turn. No. No. Yes. I'm trying to give mm -hmm. control to Steve and it's being an absolute. Mm -hmm. Control by Steve. Okay, save. Can you move it? Yeah. Okay, cool. 
All right, uh, Rolling Rock's done. Buddy, you're up. Uh, that one on the other side of Ezekiel's looking softer. Yeah, they beat that. Like it got punctured pretty good. It, it's got a couple of arrows that are sticking out of it, and it looks like the eye is kind of a good point of targeting. The head is basically nothing more than just like an eye container. I take a couple healthy steps back. Oh, and uh, for note, the um, there's like a light bulb on the back of it. You can see that there. It's actually glowing kind of like a kind of greenish color right now. And it's kind of spiraling okay. like a uh, cop car. Uh, okay, I like that. Um, I, I don't give this uh, cantrip enough enough traction. We're going to try it. I'm going to go ahead and twin it. I'm going to aim it at the top two. Okay. I'm going to use Mind Sliver. Okay. That is a DC 14 Intelligence. Oh. I'm hoping robots aren't too, too smart. Um, intelligence. Uh, neither pass. Um, so Sick. First, first one's taking 12, and you said the first one was the Ezekiel one, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead and give me the second mind sliver. Uh, ba, ba, ba. three. <laughs> okay. That's two air ends of the spectrum. So when it hits the one um, that is near Ezekiel, it kind of causes it to short. And you watch as like the joints and the top of it kind of start sparking all over the place. Um, and it seems to be kind of moving a bit more erratically. Cool. Uh, they will each take a D4 subtracted on their next saving throw. Okay. Silas, you're up. Dodge. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Rizekio. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go big boy. Mm -hmm. And then, uh... Over and hit this one that's already been... Dodge into a bonfire. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, and this is with Maleficera, but I don't know if that matters against yes, these guys. Yes, they are constructs. Okay. Let's see. So it I... is one d six additional damage. Three more damage, so that's so... 12, 14, 17 damage. Did you turn large? Yeah, I did. Okay, I'll make you big. All right, Ezekiel. Anything else? Oh, that was the first attack. Is that one down yet, or no. is it still standing? Okay. Some healthy robots. Right, that's 10. Ignore the 3. It's only on the first attack. Okay. And so that's 13 total slashing on that one. So you kind of rush in, smash, smash with Maleficer, and it kind of backs off, and it's still sparking, but the cuts seem to kind of leave, like, these nice, beautiful black grooves in the... It's like it's charring the metal as it's cutting through. Um, it's still standing. Kind of like still shaking and sparking all over the place, but yeah. Um, okay, it goes to their initiative. Um, the one that you're standing next to um, kind of locks its shields in front of it and kind of starts dropping down low and kind of holding itself in this kind of defensive posture. Um, the one here moves up to about that far away from you drops its shields down, and as it hits the ground, you watch the top of it kind of launch up, and it vaults about 20 feet in the air, coming down oh, oh, <laughs> coming down with the shields in like a hammer kind of slam on you. Um, Pretty cool. 23 to hit. Yep. And you take 9 bludgeoning damage, and if you are large or smaller, you're knocked prone. Nice. <laughs> Just hits him and kind of topples him down. Um, as you kind of lay there, you kind of hear the clunk clunk of the uh, next one doing the exact same thing, coming down on top of you with the shields. And twenty-four to hit. And because you are prone already, you take. But I'm going to do silvery barb step. Okay, uh, twenty-one to hit. Okay, so um, who do you want to give uh, the Rezekiel? Okay, you have the uh, advantage on your next attack roll. Is that right? 
Yep. Okay. Um, so you're going to take 16 points of bludgeoning damage. And I will remember to say that I am backing and hitting. I kind of did that time. It worked out well. But yeah. Um, but this one kind of locks in position. Once those two land, um, it would have moved over. But yeah, connecting them. Cool, cool, cool. Nyx, you are up. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um, we're gonna do uh, vicious mockery on one of them. So let me just put that up there. Do that. Uh, and we'll do it on um, the one that's damaged the most. Yep. DC 16 failure. So it'll be three psychic and it has a disadvantage on its next attack roll. Okay. Nyx, you are done, right? Yes. You sir. Uh, targeting the same one I've been shooting at. Okay. 15 to hit. That will miss. 20 to hit. As it slams like straight in between, you, you can see it like it's like a foresight thing. It's got its shields close together, but you can see a narrow gap where its eye is visible, and you fire straight towards that, and you're like, got you. Bam. Arrow goes flying forward. The one next to its arm shoots out like a spring, and you hear a boom as the shield slams right in front of that creature, and the arrow hits the shield. The arm then retracts very suddenly back into that position. So it does not hit, is the point. Intercept attack was used as a reaction by the one to its side. Oh, that sounds like bullshit. Um, yeah. Intercept attack. In response to another creature within five feet of it being hit by an attack, roll the clockwork gives the creature a plus five bonus to AC against the attack, potentially causing a miss. And its current AC is 18, plus five would be 23. Yeah, huh? Still sounds like bullshit. <laughs> Fair enough. The mass, is, the mass is there, it's just bullshit. <laughs> Sounds like some uh, turning into sand to get rid of your armor bullshit. Okay, so anyways, Rolling Rock, um, unless you have anything else you there. No, that was it. <laughs> yeah, Rolling Rock, you're up. Uh, I've wiped, wiped the sweat from my brow, started to panic a little bit. I was, or whatever, but uh, uh, they said they want me to try to crack this safe, so keep keep trying. Okay. Yep, they sure did. You got this, uh, buddy. 21. You kind of get them back in there and kind of like finagle, finagle, and you hit a point where it was like before, and you hear like a loud kind of click, and then the spiral egg kind of twist. It was two more uh, lockpicks as it breaks them, um, and uh, the horns start blaring again. Um, you see that the ones that still have their tops, which would be this one here and this one here, start shining with a green light on their tops. Um, and then you see this weird kind of crystal extend out of the top of them. I think you're doing great. He's got to open the door. This uh, is only good. Let's do. This is great. So, uh, bonus set, and then just bonus action. I'm going to move my blade forward 20 feet. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. So the lights on the things that shot out the robots and the robots match currently. Yes, correct. Okay. And also, the ones that still have their toppers, which again is just this one here and this one here, they have um, uh, extended um, weird crystals off the tops of them, which are also kind of emanating the same green light. Rolling rock done. Bodhi, you're up. Well, uh, let's bonus action cure wounds on, or not cure wounds, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, healing word on. Ezekiel, let's... Hold on. Okay. So, um, the second you start casting your spell, you see the green beam, a green beam appear from the crystal above and kind of zap into your magic. Like, just a fine uh -huh. line of... Zoop, and it kind of cuts the magic as you're casting it. Dispelling it. Neat, neat, neat. No then, way it can do it twice. And that was just used spell gone. Used its I yell from safety. Reaction. Uh, and bonus action, I was going to Eldritch Blast that weekend one. <laughs> okay. Or uh, my action, Eldritch Blast. Uh, that'll miss. I do two. Wow. That'll also miss. They kind of slam into the shields. Bonk, bonk. It's consistent. Yeah. 
They're a good grouping. Silas. And I'm gonna fall back just to hear more. Rage, and since I'm in his group, I'm blessed now as well. Is that not? Well, you're in his aura, which means you have any. Or, no, that, that's not. Oh, no, um, sorry, that's not an aura. That's his blind sight. Sorry. Yeah. He's not. Oh, okay. He's not a paladin. He's a fighter. <laughs> Got it. His auras are for himself, not for others. Uh, and I did say raging and reckless. That will hit, um, and you're hitting this one, um, like right next to you. Okay, of course. Okay. Yep. He has blind sight. Uh, Rezekiel does. Yeah. Me, me too. Seventeen damage. Okay. Uh, you rush in, bring the giant slayer greatsword, slash into it. Kind of, it's it's looking in the other direction. Just kind of focus on Rezekiel. You kind of get behind it and put a nice big cut on it. As you hit it, it kind of <laughs> it starts turning around, and you like swing the next blade and cut it as well. And it seems to take like a bunch of damage in its back, um, not enough to kind of cause it to start sparking up and being weird, but uh, definitely solid hits in the back. But it kind of like <laughs> and opens its shields up, so one's focused against you and one's focused against Ezekiel. All right, Silas done. Um, Ezekiel, you're up. I'm gonna stand up. That's a good answer. And uh, bonus action, second wind. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to swing another one that's been getting hit. Hell yeah. Oh, 11 misses. Oh, I have advantage because of the silvery barbs. Heck yeah. You do? Ooh. It's a crit. He does, yep. So, so very nice, very nice. Or... Wow, that one never comes down. <laughs> 13 damage, right? Yeah. Okay, that that's solid. It's still and then, uh For Maleficent, do I roll that damage twice as well? You would, for the yes. I roll two of them then. Six more damage on top of that. Okay. First it attack. Is, it is Excellent. still standing. Jesus Christ. We are doing okay. We got this, boys. I believe. Don't worry. I'm sure it's going to Phantom Menace style turn them off once we get the egg open. Yeah, the third yeah. one's got to unlock it. That's it's just not going to let more, more not going to pop out, right? That's yeah, a neat trick. That's a good trick. Does uh, uh, a 20 hit? Because I got Bardic Inspiration. 20 will. You do have Bardic Inspiration, yep. Is Bardic Inspiration dice a d10 now? It's a d8. Oh, it's a d8, my bad. I thought it was a d10. Oh, never mind. Oh, fudge. Yeah, that'll miss. Pick him up and drop him head first on that tube that uh, Rolling Rock was he climbing in earlier. He wouldn't fit. But Rolling Rock is a bit more condensed than these guys. These are probably closer to Uther's height um, than uh, Rolling Rock ever was. And yeah, probably, just smash them in there. Probably closer to Ezekiel standing really close and next to Silas's width. <laughs> we got this, boys. We got this. Um, so uh, Ezekiel done. It goes to them. The one that's being beaten the fuck out of just continues to maintain its like defensive posture and keeps its kind of legs locked down, um, keeping kind of guard on its chest. The two that are not doing that, this one immediately kind of spins and focuses its attention on uh, Silas. As it kind of puts the shields in front of you, it throws the shields down with like a loud thud on the metal, vaults up into the air about five feet, and then brings the shields down on top of Silas. Uh, 17 to hit, or, oh, you recklessly attacked, right? Yes. Okay, 25 to hit. I'm going to make that hit the one that's being injured instead. Because with my ability. Oh, right. Show me the thing. Nice. I just gotta remember Let me how. figure out which rune it is. This rune. Okay, I love it. Okay, so it kind of jumps up into the air and is coming down. And as it's coming down, you kind of like spin the cloud rune. And it like twists the golem in air. And it comes down on the other friend and knocks it to the ground. And it's like confused. But it kind of like, like lifts itself up with its shields. Um, as it's knocked prone by its ally. Um, then it takes its initiative, kind of getting up onto the ground, or off of the ground like that, it immediately vaults up into the air like the other the one. The one that's already injured? No, 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 the one that's... Uh... Yeah, I was having to hit the one that's already injured. Oh, no, that's not adjacent. It doesn't have to be. Within 30 feet. Yeah. That is such a great feature, Drent. Such a great feature. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hold on. Does that force move the attacker, then? No, it just makes the attack hit the person, depending. Doesn't yeah, but it's a melee range. attack. It's magic. Yeah, it doesn't matter what the range it says. Interesting. Yeah, so it shoots It opens the... up a hole like in Looney Tunes and it punches them. And yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, no, that's even funnier than I thought. It's so a, it kills the a one circle that... opens up. <laughs> it kills the one that's been trying to keep itself alive. So that... Yeah! 
Ignore the one getting up. The, the one that's totally fine continues jumping and hitting Ezekiel. Sorry. <laughs> but the other one did that, kill That right. sounds better. Okay, so I I do hit. Any reactions before I continue? I guess Ezekiel. I got nothing. Nothing? Okay. Nothing. So um, that will hit, and then you'll take 12 points of bludgeoning damage, Ezekiel. And you're not prone. Oh, all right. Uh, at right. the end of the turn, not done uh, I'm okay. So after that, the uh, towers go. Um, Bodhi, um, the weird green beam that kind of fired the first time had like an ethereal nature to it. It wasn't like very bright. It was kind of magically like transparent. This sure. next beam that shoots out of it is very dark and snaps towards you and hits you with the force of an Eldric Blast. Um, you take nine points of force damage as it hits you. And the other beam cannon fires at uh, Silas. And it has advantage, so that is a crit. Um, it is force damage, so you're having it due to your rage. So half of 19 is 9. Cool. Uh, now I'm cycling back to the end of the turn. What were you going to say? I don't know if it's going to work for them or not. Because I, them being robots, I'm pretty sure they're going to be immune to it, but just in case. Uh, this, uh, one that just attacked me, I need to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, damn it. The wrong thing. Uh, yeah, wisdom saving throw. How Before many runes can you have at a time? I can have two right now. That's what I have the stone and cloud, cloud rune. Okay. Well, wait, isn't you turning big? That's, that's a separate No, thing. that's just giant my yeah. Okay, okay. They're both using your reaction, though. Oh, they can't be charmed. Um, but yeah, they are both using your reaction. You oh, can't gotcha. use your reaction twice. Ooh, and and uh, second win includes your fighter level as well. Yeah, I got 12 back. From... You did, I'm sorry, John. You did 9 points of force damage to me? I did. Yeah, yeah. To Bodhi. Okay. And also to Silas. Okay. I thought I had some resistance to it, but I guess I don't. Nix, you're up. It's yep. definitely called that. But it's not. That. I'm going to That's give not. Ezekiel Bardic Inspiration again. Uh, and I'm going to try to position this. Uh, I want to cast Shatter where it'll hit the two of them, but not our, my allies. Uh, so it's um, 10 foot sphere, radius sphere. So I, prob I can make that happen, right? Yeah, throw behind him. Yeah, I'll just throw it behind him. Oh, um, no, you gotta hit at least one of them. That thing did cancel a spell earlier. Uh, well, okay. I, uh, we'll see what happens. So you're casting a spell? You're yeah, I'm casting a spell. You're outside of my range. Okay. So Six. it's a DC 16 wisdom save. Okay. Um, is that Sil right? Silas no, a DC 16... C con save we love that. and it has disadvantage because it is a construct it is stone crystal metal yeah that's fine. silas or ezekiel have to get I hit have, by this yeah I we're gonna to... let cyrus get silas get hit because ezekiel is getting banged up and silas will, ha will have it i have advantage against it as well because i have magic resistance so um will that cancel each other out it'll be base save yeah uh 18 and uh 17 cool but fudgicles okay so they'll take half of six yeah, lame. And then okay. um, Silas, you'll take half of six and then half of that. And then what I like to do is to move a scooch one. over here and try. I, I assume this is, this looks like an elevation, like if I can take cover from what I see shooting. It is a us. bit of an elevation, so yeah. it would. Give so you... I'm small. I'm going to try to get down. Yeah, so I'm, you are definitely getting into the ickiness of the green matter, but it's not. it doesn't seem to have any I'm okay with that. Yeah. I, I've, I've lived in worse. Nix is done. You threw up. I'm gonna target the one uh, under Ezekiel, the lower one. Oh, okay, okay. Twenty-seven. Hit. And eight or nineteen. Okay. okay. So sixteen, Plus seventeen, three. eighteen, nineteen. Okay, solid hits. Bing, bing. You're not able to kind of get the eye because it's kind of like behind behind the dog. You're able to kind of get the shoulder gears and such, but like it's not as clean as the first guy you hit. Um, rolling rock. All right, boys. Time to end, the, end this 
Mummer's yeah, arse. Open the door for us. Oh, yeah, you got this. Bring out the big robot. Oh, no. I only got a 17. Does anybody want to spend their inspiration? You haven't yeah, been giving them out it? like you have been. Yeah, I'm <laughs> you, going You stop to. giving them away. I know, Charlie. We don't have it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay, cool. 22. You put your tools in there, click, and uh, it destroys those uh, picks as well. So two more picks off the table. I have two left, boys. Uh, as it spins... I need Uther and Rolling Rock both to make constitution saving throws. All day. Wait. <laughs> oh, oh, no. day. Wow, feast or famine. Oh no. Yeah. We did it. We're like we're like high fiving and then it explodes. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. <laughs> the egg grow glows bright green for a second, and then it seems to have this weird top spin. When the top spin goes, it seems like it's expecting something that's not present to happen. And then in response to that, it kind of juts out this kind of displacement of air. It's like, if you've ever seen the slow motion camera views of like an explosion happening, that kind of ring that exits out from the explosion, that just that shock happens. Wave. Yeah, that shockwave just kind of, yeah, that's a good word. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> a shockwave happens hate to break the it <laughs> and the two of you take 17 points of force damage and are pushed away from the egg 15 feet. Good for Which means rolling Uther. rock. No, sorry. <laughs> no, no. no, I'm saying you three. He's fine. Oh, over the edge. Shout out. I'm good. Off the balcony. Damn, rolling rock is coming with the new rook lid. Let's go. So, rolling rock, um, after you are displaced, I will allow you to make a dexterity saving throw to try and grab onto anything on the way down. Otherwise, you're taking a 60 foot ball. Oh, no. Okay. So. Pain. Roll six ones. Um. Okay, roll. Um. So you get shunted off, and as you're falling, um, you kind of like can see that the door near you, the six locks are kind of slamming into place with like a sudden force, but you're not able to see the result afterwards as you hit the ground to take thirty six points of damage, and just oh. like, the air sucks out of you. Darkness takes over, and you just kind of. Oh, oh. <laughs> Um, for everyone else, there's this immediate magnetic sense that kind of fills the area, um, and the ground kind of, like, starts vibrating on the metal ground that you're standing on, and a blue light courses through the space as the final lock on the mechanism shoots up into the air, and the whole solid disc pattern starts breaking apart into smaller spaces, um, smaller pieces, and kind of moving into the sides of the wall. Um, bear with me here. So the door did open? Uh-huh. Okay. Bailed it. The clock, Ooh. The clock <laughs> creatures are not changing their... Rolling energy. rock, look what you did. <laughs> okay, I'm dying. <laughs> I'm unconscious. <laughs> Blood oh, spitting out onto his beard. <laughs> but um, he did roll. <laughs> he did roll a little bit. On the rolling rock. <laughs> you can't take that away from him. Can't ever take that away from uh, Bodie. Damn, I'm already. I'm straight. I'm not straight up bed. Why am I extra already? Buddy, buddy, you landed in the best place. You relax. Right by the door. Buddy, you are. Up. Uh, I mean, I'm here. Uh, oh, I love that. I'm going to uh, sort of measure paces to where Nix was standing, and go to there. Okay. I am going to. He's too far. We're going to cast the uh, healing word spell. And nobody's stopping me this time, yeah? Doesn't seem to be the case. Okay. And we're going to upspell it. Upper spells. Roll a grok to get 11. It's just 11. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. And he's up, and with action, I know they're resistant, but I've... Wait, am I in distance? Yeah, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna twin Mind Sliver again on okay. those two. DC 14 Intelligence. Hi, baby! <laughs> hey, baby! Oh, baby! It's a little baby Canadian! <laughs> The one on the south will succeed, oh, the one on the so north cute. will not. It'll Maple take baby. the six. 
All right, so this one here is the slivered one. Okay. All right. So he has a minus one d4 on his next save. Yep. Why is Rolly Rock still X out? <laughs> All right. Um, sorry, my uh, computer is uh, being really temperamental. Hey, good. I'm up. Yep. That's I'm true. Fight. Twelve and twenty-seven. Bear with me here. Twelve will miss. Twenty-seven will hit. Um, so thirteen. Okay. Cool. cool. Sorry, um, I'll have you know <laughs> that um, John is a very prepared individual, more often than not. Um, I genuinely did not expect you to fuck with the door long enough to try and get it and, like, would go, Oh, another key? We're gonna go find it uh, somewhere else. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> you fool. Not really thinking that <laughs> fucking with it would set the other... Even the first one would have been like, Okay, well, we should probably stop. But that didn't happen, so I'm very quickly trying to... Um, the interior map was never built. <laughs> well, we're going in. We're going in. Um, so You're I to, welcome. I have to very quickly do that. Um, so, yeah, I took the damage. Personally, um, I still want us to go to Bridger, but now we got this cool thing. Ezekiel, you're up. You didn't have to show us this. Like, these uh, no, you, did, you missed it. No, you no, were no. walking by and it was too far down. I got the 20 perception check. Okay. That, it, it happened. I think we're going into Kmart, folks. Dragons, dragons were metal as hell. We gotta go so we here. can't go yeah. inside. This Rizekul, clearly Kmart. Rizekul, you're um, uh, up. I'm going to stand up again and uh, attack the one that uh, Silas is attacking. You have another Bardic Inspiration. Oh, okay. God, I wish I had an angel on that one, too. The D8, you said? Yeah. Yep, D8. Okay, you got so it. I got it. definitely hit on that one. So that is 12, 16, and I rolled 6, too, so 22 damage on the first hit. Okay. Hold on a second here. Okay. What's uh, half of 65? 32.5. Way to go, Wilbers. Thought you were rounding again. <laughs> Same. This is, yeah, this is for maps. Gotcha. Okay. Um, someone hit me. I hit the one that's next to Silas for six, uh, 22 damage. 22 damage, okay, cool. And I'm going to hit it again, hopefully. Okay. Uh, yeah. 23 to hit. That'll hit. Five more, and uh, also... And plus two more, so seven more total. Okay. Uh, it's definitely doing the sparking thing. It has been for a while, sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's my turn next, so I should probably pay attention. Uh, it, it, it definitely is on its last kind of, uh, you know... 10 or so, 20 or so uh, health. They're going to kind of switch their posture together, both focusing in on Rezekiel. Um, and uh, I'm going to smash them. Uh, both are doing the kind of jump attack thing. The first one is going to attack. Uh, eight is going to miss. And the second one's going to attack. Uh, any reactions or anything? No? Okay, so then it's going to be a, a 19 to hit. Miss. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Why is your AC not showing on your token? What? I have no idea. Yeah, I, I, could, I could take the silvery barbs after I learn whether it's a hit or not. That's how it works, so yeah. I don't have to wait. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so yeah, they both miss, and then the two beam cannons, one's going to fire at Silas, and one's going to fire at Rezekiel. Um, a hit against Rezik or against uh, Silas. I have advantage um, already because he's recklessly attacking, so do you want to use silvery barbs? How is how is Silas looking? More than healthy. Yeah, I'm gonna let it go then. Yeah, dude, I'm okay. fine. Against Ezekiel, I am hitting. I'm gonna use it here if I can. Okay, then. that's fine. It still hits. A 23 will still hit, but the other hit was a crit, so a good choice. Um, it's only going to do nine points of force damage against you. All right. Then, uh, assuming I get the advantage, or is uh... yeah, I'm gonna give it to you again. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that will be it for the um, thems. Oh, but... And it'll go to you. Yeah, um, we're going to start off. Uh, which, which one is the one that's th that's the most damaged? That one right there. This one? Okay. And, and the other wow. one's fairly healthy? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're going to do uh, Dissonant Whispers 
Actually, no. First, we're going to do... Um, I'm going to do this smart. Uh, first, we're going to do... We're going to use one of our bardic inspiration to do unsettling words. Finally, starting to play a little bit smarter. And then we'll do... Um, no, not to send whispers. Then we'll do shatter. Um, and so we're going to place it again so it's not going to hit Rezekiel. Damn, these rolls. Look at these rolls. Two ones. This is a 3d8. Don't worry, I felt that. Well, it's the second time I got that. In any case, one of them has um, disadvantage. No, I'm sorry. One of them has... Which one? Shit. Um, this this one. Has, one? Okay. Yeah, has... No, no, unfortunately, no. It's just two subtracted from its constitution save. Oh, okay. And this is for the... And it also has a D4 minus two. Sorry, this is for the shatter uh, save. It's for shatter, yep. Got it. Mm -hmm. So um, the first one, the the one who doesn't have the penalty, um, he will... They each have a penalty. Oh, okay. Sorry. What's the penalty? Are they both the same? The D4? No. He rolled a two for the southern one. I'm going to roll my D4. Okay. For four oh. minus for the top one. Okay. So the top one's rolling with a minus four. Minus four. But advantage <laughs> because magic resistance. But sure. disadvantage because metal. So just straight roll minus four. Got it. Yes. Okay, so I rolled a 19. Uh, minus four would be a 15. So that'll fail. So seven. And then the other one has a minus two. And the same deal regarding uh, that. Uh, 20 minus two is 18. So that's so half. The three. And then unfortunately, Silas also needs to save, I think, right? Is it con again? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. 16. Got so it. You take Excellent. half of 7, which is 3, and half of 3, which is 1. Uh, sorry, wish I could do better. You just keep doing 1 damage to Silos. It's not a I know. Uh, it's next. acceptable. Oh, are, you, are you a robot? <laughs> uh, you, so, you throw, you're kind of displaced from the orb. The orb is kind of glowing with that kind of green colored energy. Um, and uh, you did watch Rolling Rock fly off the edge, but he's been healed, right? Nah, he's probably uh, fine. Yeah. Uh, I patched it up a little I, bit. I heard the moving parts. So. I, would, I would say just for dramatic effect, the rock that you landed on does have like a nice like red splatter like on it from where you hit. Just his My his spine. In it. <laughs> really? Are you he there? fully wily coyote that shit. <laughs> I'm gonna walk up to the edge. I'm gonna. There's step a beard over. outlined. In it. <laughs> Cause I've got the I've got the slippers. I'm gonna take two shots as I step over. Okay. Uh, the one next to the Silas has been punching on. Cool. Uh, so they yep. both hit. Nice. Yeah, they both hit. And you kind of like shoot at it um, towards the light first. When you hit it, it causes the spring to kind of shoot out. And you can see a bit more of the inner workings of the back. And as it's kind of trying to turn to kind of block you, you manage to shoot that second one off quick. It slides right into the back core of it. It shoots out the front of this like weird kind of metal, like softer metal core at the center. And the whole thing just kind of drops. I just start walking down the door. Oh, there's no door to walk down. It's open. Oh, okay. The picture looks like it's only open like halfway. Oh no no no! It's completely open. Yeah, it's it's it. You go in. It's now an archway. It's just gone. Uh, then I'm just Batman. around. I'm Batmaning from the top of the arch. I'm just upside Spidermaning. Okay. Ah, uh, that's right. <laughs> um, inside there's kind of a smell of um, clean water, and there's kind of like a sound of mechanism that's kind of a low thrumming. And there's kind of like a bluish ambiance to the whole space. But just looking in, it's just like a mess of metallic and stuff. You can't really make out anything yet unless you leave the encounter and move in. Ooh. No, I just admire the glow in yeah. my work. Rolling Rock, you are prone, so standing up is half your movement. And then... Yeah, I'll spend half my movement uh, to get up. I kind of crack my back as I get up. Uh, as I walk over, kind of bend over, just grab a handful of sand, walk over to Bodhi. I... Oh, you one lad, and then I'll target. Um, actually, he's... as he's as he's coming forward, I'm gonna I like I can, yeah, I can put a hand out, now. like not too much closer. I'll target all six of us since I can, and I'll be like, ah, I'll the sand he picked up starts kind of swirling around his hand, and then he kind of just like lets it pop out in a wave, and I'll do a mass healing word on all six of us. 
Okay. Bitch. And then, like, we all do I do we roll it six times or do we just all gain seven? Uh, for masculine word, it's one roll. Okay, so we all we all regain seven. Little 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 top up for all of us. Yeah, You're too far from your mic, John. You are a little far from your mic. Sorry, it, it it's all it's all for one. If it, it's twinned, it's two separate castings technically. So I, said, I don't know if it'll get there in time, but I'll just move this twenty feet forward. Okay, <laughs> I forgot about that guy. Bodhi, it's you not, it's not concentration, it. so it just kind of sits there. <laughs> And this has been uh, sorry, my turn. It's been around for three rounds, so seven more and it goes away. Yeah. Um. Yeah, hell with it. We're. I, I think we're doing okay. I'm just gonna Eldritch Blast it from here. Pew pew. Miss, probably. I think I missed. Yeah, both of those missed. Pew. <laughs> Silas. Stepping in and attacking this other one. 18 and 27, or 26 and 27. Yeah, um, both will hit. And decent amount of damage. Right? 12. But you have to move your token. Um, yeah, for my movement, I'm going to move over. And, yep. Yep. 12 there. Actually, I probably shouldn't do that, should I? Too late. Why not? <laughs> okay. Why? <laughs> Why? No, it's fine. Go ahead. You can continue moving. You you did move. No, attack. it's fine. It's go ahead. It's fine. What what you want to do? <laughs> Attitude <laughs> coming from. <laughs> Roll all your attacks. Just when you said I can't do anything, I'm done. No, 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 no. I said uh, I thought you were saying you wanted to go back. <laughs> continue if you want. If you have anything else, do it. I what? No, no I'm fine. You said I'm doing my problem. I, no, no, no. Hold on. Don't you give me this treatment, Jody. You said... He broke his heart. I don't want to do oh, that, shit. do I? And I said, you already rolled your two attacks in my head. And no, said, no, no. Not okay. the attacks. I meant moving forward. No, no, no. You had to have moved forward. You couldn't attack the guy from me. Why? Your, because this one's dead. Okay, so I got you to were, attack both of them? No, no. No, 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 there was only one to attack. You'd have had to move to hit yeah, him. And that, yeah, sorry. My bad. <laughs> it's okay. You had to move up to the new one. It's okay. You can continue to do what you want. It's fine. Don't you dare pass it <laughs> Fine, John. <laughs> Let it go. If nobody has advantage or uh, inspiration anymore, <laughs> taking it away. Ezekiel, you're up. I'm gonna stand up. Steal it. Steal it all. You got knocked uh, over a bunch of times. Let's see. That's a miss. Yeah, bardic inspiration. Hand no, advantage. I took it. It's not... You can have it. No, it's 15. It still misses. Yeah. Unfortunately. Okay, second attack? The 21? That will work. And then it'll be 9 slashing, and then let me roll a 6. So 1, so 10 slashing. The giant so might only slashing. goes on the first attack. It's not the first attack you hit with. I think so. Let me double check. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm going to death throws here. This is the third turn activation of the towers, right? Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, it just says uh, once on each of your turns, one of your attacks with a weapon or an unarmed strike can deal an extra 1d6 damage to a target. Okay. So the um, clockwork kind of jumps up and tries to hit Rezekiel again and misses. Um, Rezekiel, you're kind of used to it now and are kind of batting it down, keeping it from kind of getting over your shoulders and getting that leverage to knock you over. Um, as that uh, finishes, the uh, one that ha the no topper was kind of spinning weird, has been spinning the whole time. It kind of like starts falling apart off the top and like you can see like this kind of smoke coming from the mechanism that's causing the pillars to spin um but the way that it's supposed to work <laughs> it's the uh, lights inside of the um uh, ones that are actually full and constructed kind of glow and the stones charge and then break and a bunch of shards kind of lift up and then fly out towards targets um silas you'll be taking Four of these and Rezekiel you'll be taking four of these as well um, so um, these are effectively a magic missile I At think I used my reaction last turn right um, silvery barbs was used last on, turn yes on yeah these, on these specifically yeah so I can't use it again until after my turn correct okay 
This is the stone at the top of the pillar yeah. that's shattering. The stone breaks, and then they, the shards of it, the four shards of the stone, become like magic missiles and fly towards their targets. Okay. Um. So, um, Silas, you'll be taking sixteen, so half is eight force damage. Um, which is pretty great rolls on that. And then, uh, Rasekul, you'll be taking fifteen force damage. I'm down. Shit. It's almost. We're almost done here. <clears throat> that will be good. That's it for the defenses. The towers are still glowing, uh, but they don't have the light on top anymore. There's no green light oscillating. Huh. You throw. You still have a decent beat on the one, kind of like behind around. Especially now that Ezekiel fell over. Oh man, I thought they killed it. Sure. Yeah, I'll start walking down the side of the thing and shoot it. Yeah. Okay. Twenty-two uh... and fourteen. Uh, 14 skip Nick. I oh. think you skip next, yeah. Sorry, Nix, go ahead before uh, those attacks go through. No worries, then we're just going to pop a shark note at the one that's left. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's not that's going to miss. Yep. Any go bonus back. actions? Um, healing word or anything? Yeah, so we're going to give another Bardic Inspiration. I, can't, I don't have Healing Word. Uh, Bardic Inspiration to Ezekiel, because he could use that for his conscious. death save, right? He's not conscious. So okay. Quick Bardic Inspiration for me. Sure. We could do that. It's long. Wall of text. Wait, I'll, I'm, I'm going to get him before he has to start making rolls. I'm still giving it to him because I'm giving our good boy all so the Bardic creature Inspiration other than yourself. Today. I thought there was a hearing for your episode, but no, there isn't. Yeah, you can Bardic Inspiration him. Okay. Interesting. Uh, cool. Um, you throw your up. You shot... Pew pew! Headed down the way. The first one hit, the second one didn't. It took 12 damage, 14, or 13, 13 damage. 13. And then Rolling Rock, you're up. The spiritual weapon gets there. Hooray! So my... Uh, actually, no, because I gotta do other stuff. Um, bonus <laughs> action. I can't use my bonus action to move what I got. I'm about other shit. I gotta save the dog. <laughs> He's too good of a boy. Oh, uh, yeah. Healing word. <laughs> That's funny. We have been drip feeding the dog for a bunch of Yeah. Days. So been... get him up, and then my normal action. Yeah, six, 55 feet. Uh, I ring, ring my totem, make a bell, like a bell, and toll the dead on the robot. Uh oh, what's the, where's the damage? If it misses, or if it... Uh... Oh, that spell's fucked up. I'll have to fix it before next. Yeah, 15 um, with wisdom saving throw. Rolled 2d12. It failed. 19 damage. God damn. Jeez. Uh, she kind of put forward the, uh, the holy symbol and kind of like, you know, uh, say the prayer. He watches a bell of kind of necrotic, kind of ghostly light appears above it, like shifted to the side and then clangs directly over top of it. You can see like this resonance of necrotic energy flow through the golem and it just drops. It shields kind of like stumbling out of its hand as it falls to the ground. And that um, is the end of the combat. I'm going to pause the music. But you, you, you tried your best spiritual weapon. You'll get it next time. Shift it over to... He's all tuckered out. <laughs> He's out of breath. We don't have a dying creature anymore, so there's no reason to continue the initiative count either. So I will clear the board and leave the table to you. Immediately after the conclusion of the fight, what you will notice is that the golems, the only real thing that seems to be like uh, residually worth anything, are the shields. They are massive stone and metal shields. There are six of them. Those seem heavy and unwieldy. Indeed. 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 Oh, their their power cores aren't made of like platinum or anything. No, it doesn't look like there's much besides like scrap metal, really. Um, <clears throat> there's no real rich metal present in these things. Yeah, I was just hoping because, like you said, it was a platinum in the core center, inside yeah. them in this. So I was like, ooh, maybe. So I'm getting the sense that. Is. Go ahead, Andy. Uh, so I'm getting the sense that this is an, an old and disused place. Like things seems to be falling into disrepair. Like, and we might have not inside. Not inside. Uh, but I will say, Rolling Rock, go ahead and make me an investigation check. If you if you are really looking through the creatures and trying to find anything, there is actually a chance of something here. Like, yeah, mostly Vitae, Vitae. just looking for those uh, the platinum. 
Yeah. We'll see. Mm-hmm. I only got an 11. Okay. Um, but yeah, the shields are unwieldy. Um, they are similar to the wave cutter long or great sword we had before. They function as a specific item, but they're different. Um, they weigh 20 pounds a piece though. So whether or not you want to take any of them is up to you. It's a lot lighter than I thought they would be. Wow. I do like giant fucking slabs of stone. <laughs> Functionally, is it just like a shield, like plus two AC? It's a plus two AC. Yep. Yeah. I mean, 20 I'll pounds probably one. isn't much heavier than the shield Ezekiel currently is what he's in. And he's a big boy. If you want to take one, you can. No, I was, I was joking. That was jokey. I can't. No that, will break my, that will break my everything. <laughs> um, I don't think how I how likely shield. is it to somebody to spot this? It looks like nobody's been around here in a while. But if somebody yeah. were to see it open. It's definitely a perception check DC 20. Um, <laughs> that's what it took. Like even from the river? No, from like where you were, yeah, like in this Right, we were up above it. Yeah, like if you're inside of the seven mile area to kind of spot these holes, it required the DC twenty just to notice them. Otherwise you could just fall into them. I will take one of the shields. I'm curious if we were to go inside. Okay. Oh, if you go inside and would it be likely somebody follows in follows us in? It's not impossible, but it's probably not likely. Uh, shield wise, um, stats wise, this is what it's going to, to uh, require, um, or what it's going to, to to do. You need a strength of fifteen or higher to use the shield. The uh, shit. If you do not yes. have a strength of fifteen or higher, you cannot use the shield as a shield. If you have a strength of fifteen or higher and are using the shield, you can use um, the shield normally. You can also use the shield as a weapon. Uh, it functions as a warhammer for attack purposes. Um, and, um, additionally, when you take the dodge action, uh, your armor class increases by five in addition to the normal effects of dodge. Whoa. Oh, I'll Can I use it as a sled? The wall. Uh, Does I, it... I assume your size, you oh. can use it as a sled. Sure. Does it happen to have the uh, light property? So I can use my offhand? <laughs> it does not. Is it finesse? <laughs> <laughs> it is not. Oh. It is the fingerprint shield, baby. It seems like a monk weapon. (laughs) Real talk, I kind of like it. I take it. There's there's six of them. I'm just turtle shelling this one. There are six of them. So again, I'm I'm just saying, as a barbarian, could I use it? Yeah. Yeah. If you're proficient with shields, you can use this item. And also, I'm not proficient with shields. I don't think uh, barbarians are proficient with shields. They are. Uh, Yeah. Pretty sure. Could be. Double checking. You have a very clear idea of what a barbarian is in your head. Uh, I will let you yeah. know. It's not right. It's not right. It, it okay. is not, yeah, well, it doesn't scream shield. For, for right, sure. that's what I'm saying. For but sure. if I can beat people with it, oh, yeah. that's kind of cool. 100%. And you can use your yeah. shield. Yeah, you're proficient with shields, buddy. Yeah. All right, I'm, I am I might take two, because I kind of like what they were doing with well, it. Well, keep in mind, you only gain the benefit of one shield. So you'll only gain a plus two bonus to your shielding. And can he do the cool launch thing? Well, you can two-weapon fighting. Which is what they were doing. They, they were well. They were using the two at once, um, but you don't really Golden have bows. technique. You don't have a technique for that. You would have. Oh. I mean, you could fight with both at the same time. But... I want Silas to be an avalanche. <laughs> don't we have a two right? weapon fighting fetish? Yeah, he's got it. I, I have it. Yeah, you could do it. It definitely could be uh, Silas with double shields. I will I'm also doing take it. taking two of them. Does anybody want my regular cool. shield that can use it? I can't. And so you, so you know. What <laughs> For whatever reason, I can't wrap my head around how to use the damn things. <laughs> and so, what you know, what they're called? They're called um, uh, white scale shields. Is this a thing in the SRD? No, it's not. Like the wave cutter great sword is something I made up. I like having unique weapons that have different function. There is also a negative property to it, but you'll discover that as the shield continues. Cool. Yeah. No, that's you great. You cannot swim. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, you think. I could use one of uh, Silas's skill as a shield. Stone. <laughs> yeah, I so I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there, making sure we're all aware. I, I kind of, I like I said, I like the idea. I think it'd be really cool. And you could use it crit. as a bread oven. I haven't got a crit against you guys in a while, so like we haven't really played with the damage to armor stuff lately. But yeah, it it has to do with that. But anyways, point of order. Uh, 
as you're kind of looking through stuff, picking up shields, getting yourself situated here, um, are you wanting to pause before you go in, or are we just going straight in? I think uh, a Do you need short us to rest. pause before we go in? No, I've got it already set up. We're ready to go. Oh, look at you. Uh, I just want to do a short rest to throw some yes. ice. I think I think uh, Rezekiel and Silas deserve a short rest. And so, you as well, um, actually. I could pump some healing into... How how hurt are we here? Well, if we're going to take a short rest, I can just... Really say, let, him, uh, let him short rest. We okay. do short rest with... You have Song of Rest, right, Andy? So. Good. I oh, have good. Song of Rest. Yeah, so that'll make, our, that'll make our short rest real good. Let's pile up some of these shields and take shelter behind them. And <laughs> you three take a nap. Okay. Go ahead and do that, and then let me know once you are ready to continue in. So the tunnel that you're looking at, it does look like it kind of goes away. As there's some me mechanisms on the sides, um, and then it kind of goes further in. You can't really see much besides the blue light that I mentioned, uh, and so on. Okay. Oh, it's for each dice? Awesome. Uh, for some arrest? Is it for each No, it's just once for arrest. Oh, is it just one? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was one per. I was like, uh, damn. Each, each each of those that would be a good feature, games. man. I've got moon milk, if you guys wanted to use some moon milk. Slurp, slurp. That'll be a new one. It College is of Sleep. <laughs> Do you want to use some? That's a no? It's feeling like a no, because they're just still I'm, rolling those I'm, dang dice. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm gonna good. roll dice. Save those for emergencies. Yeah, I got my two hit points back. I also I don't, shrunk down whenever you get a second. I don't get anything like sorcery points or spell slots from short rest, do I? Um, unless you have a feature that says so. I don't. I didn't think so. I was just making sure. If we were playing Celasta, you could. Sorcery points. That's true. That's true. I think it's just uh, warlocks that get short rest bonuses. I don't agree, but hold on a second. I'm going to double check to make sure. Yeah, catnap with a warlock is uh, that's a combo. Sorcery points. Long yeah, it's rest. Long rest. Yeah. That's it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Then um, we're going in, right? Yay. Yeah. Sounds good to me. You walk through this tunnel, and you can see that there's an opening you know, that comes out into a larger chamber. Um, the tunnel between the front entrance and the tunnel of the uh, terminus is about a uh, hundred feet distant, and it kind of cones down and kind of narrows down to a much narrower kind of entryway. So the ceiling kind of gradiates down to a height of about twenty-five feet instead of. 60 feet like outside uh, but the ground kind of remains consistent at the middle line or just below the middle line of the circle if that makes sense you can hear the rush of water up ahead you can hear the sound of clockwork and mechanism and you can also feel the buzz of magic that i mentioned is kind of outside but it's more present on the interior everything's still that worked brass mm -hmm. okay and um the ground before you, um, up ahead, looks like it's a jade or kind of greenish, um, like marble colored uh, material. Are we Is moving it like map? that bridge from before? <clears throat> so, no, it's different. Um, but okay, sorry. It's kind of like an ornate kind of green stone. I can't think of what it's like a green, like fine marble. I just don't know the name of it. Like Lapis Lazuli is like the blue one, there's a green one, and I can't remember what it's called. Um, because again, I did not expect you to <laughs> go into this goddamn place. The uh, gears on the outside uh, balcony appear to be moving, kind of like tick, 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 moving. You can see that there are two large belts, um, conveyor belts below you. So on the level that you're on, uh, those conveyor belts are about like 40 feet down, and they're about 20 feet above the water. Um, the water seems to be kind of rushing, um, on the right side, it appears to be rushing inward. Um, on the left side, it appears to be rushing outward. But there appears to be a flow of water on either side uh, that seems to be kind of creating this kind of nexus at the points at the top. Um, 
that uh, kind of churning. Um, you can see that there are these weird mouths at the end of the conveyor belt, and based on everything you're kind of looking at, it looks like it's feed. It would be, it would be feeding into that space um, more than anything. Um, it looks like there is a higher dais on the far side, uh, past what appears to be some sort of uh, facsimile of the door outside, uh, with an ornate looking egg kind of placed in the middle, gold with uh, filigree about it. Um, and there's some sort of like workstation in the center at the top. Um, and then beyond that, uh, a dais that looks like um, almost like it's a throne. There are two massive creatures on the right and left uh, made of gold. Um, they don't really look like creatures you're aware of. Um, you can make an arcana check if you have jack of all trades, but I know no one else is trained in that, uh, that skill, so. Um, I could do it, yeah. So I could I'm call on my ancestor. So that's another reason for, for the maybe the, the headband would help me with these arcana checks that no one else is able to make, um, unfortunately. I thought they gave it to you. No, that that's Rolling Rock has it. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, you don't know what these creatures are. Um, they're just very large kind of bird-like creatures. But what you can tell is that the dais at the far side, there's a door behind the dais, and it appears to be blocked entirely by the two points of the bird's wings, kind of closing off together like two blades. And, uh, yeah. A little bit of music, I guess. Um, maybe? There it is. So I do. I have one more second level spell slot. I could borrow knowledge again for Arcana if we, if we like really want to know whatever that was. Oh, sorry. One other thing. It looks like over here, and here, here, and here. Yeah, real guns. They look like railguns, sure, but in, in truth, what they look like is um, some sort of seated position, um, like strange sort of like mechanism. Um, it, it may be a, a railgun, but probably not that. No. It magnetizes yes. a bullet. <laughs> um, you said conveyor, so everything, there's, there's a lot of moving parts the even, conveyors even are now. Not, the conveyor belts are not moving. But the, okay. the the gears on the right side and left side that are kind of on those balconies on the right and left, those are moving. Okay, what do we see on the conveyors themselves? Broken pieces of material. It looks like pieces of stonework. There's some weapons that are kind of thrown in and about uh, in that area. Um, like on quick inspection, there's only two weapons that you can see. Looks like a short sword there and a um, like a single-bladed longsword on the other side. Uh, but everything else is like pieces of stone, pieces of metal, uh, all just kind of rested there um, for Eternia. Or I think we'll be able to get the sword, sadly. It's been I want, down there. I want that horse thing. I want that sword. Yeah, I want that egg. There's a horse how far head. down How far down are they? And Are they submerged in the liquid? Conveyor belts are 40 feet down. Water below that is 20 feet down. And the water is unknown how deep due to the rush of it. It's kind of got a, a foamy white, so you can't really tell how deep it is. There's gotcha. no transparency. It is super cool looking. This is an amazing map. Yeah, Suspeku is, again. Are these uh, blue blueprints on the table for something? I don't like know. Plans? Are you heading over there? Yeah, yes. Over there. The I mean, the effort we got to come go. in. Wait for that. Uh, yeah, I guess if we don't see a lot of activity, yeah, we be on your guard. You know, he's gone. As you pass the first ring, you hear a kind of. Oh, got zoomies. You hear a kind of, vroom, and then you see a kind of glow on the metal on the interior, kind of like a light that kind of shines over you as you pass through it. And as you move through it, you are probably towards the back, keeping an ear out hears a very loud, very familiar sound to what he heard outside. The door seals behind you. And that's oh. where we'll end the session for tonight. Thanks for watching those that did. We'll pick up next week as they continue into the clockwork lair. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs>